Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I want to dig into the process of mix referencing. That is, comparing the mixes and masters that we're working on to other professionally mixed and master tracks as we work on them, and how one plugin in particular that comes with Logic can help you actually see how your mixes are stacking up against your references. Now, I'm a huge proponent of referencing. I think it's absolutely crucial it's important to help give context, give us a guiding light, so we're not just floating around in the dark making guesses of what we think a balanced mix should sound like, but instead we have examples to show us what a balanced mix actually sounds like. Now, when I pick out references, number one, I wanna pick out tracks that I specifically love for their mix qualities. So maybe it's for the overall balance and I would like my track to match that balance, or I love them for the drums or the ambience or the vocals, whatever. Number two, I prefer to pick reference tracks that match the style of music that I'm working on in my Logic projects. So if I'm working on a rock mix, I would pick rock references. You don't have to pick similar style, but for what I'm about to demonstrate, I highly recommend picking the same style of music. So I have a mix here that I've been working on for a bit, and you know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Underneath my mix are the two reference tracks that I've used throughout the mix process. Let's just kind of compare and contrast where I'm at and what my references sound like. Take a listen to this louder section of my song and I'll compare and contrast against my first reference track. Okay, now let's take a listen to a quieter section of my mix against the other reference track. I'm trying to find a place where I can crack the words wide. The wide of the snow in the gray of night. Connection came to me like I see the road of rock. Okay, so I can tell there are some differences, but to be honest, I've been hanging with this mix and these references for a while. My perspective is pretty biased, so I can't quite deduce what's really different anymore. So that's why I have this empty audio track here, and I'm going to load the Match EQ. Now the Match EQ is amazing, and really I don't see anybody ever talking about it. This plugin can actually show us what is different about our mix against our reference tracks to help further guide and refine the balance of our mixes. Now, I'm applying it to an empty audio track because I don't want this to be applied to my mix or the reference tracks. I don't want anything to be adjusted. I just want to use it to visualize what's going on. Now, it's much easier to just show you how the Match EQ works instead of trying to explain it. So let me select my track in the main window, open the project browser using key command F, or we have this button here in the control bar. So I click that on and off, and now we have the project browser. We can see that my mix is selected within the project browser. If I open the Match EQ, I click and drag this onto the Match EQ to the current tab and let go. The Match EQ is going to analyze my mix and then sort out an EQ curve for my whole mix, sorting out an average of what my mix sounds like. Now, if I select my first reference track, click and drag it to the reference tab, the Match EQ once again analyzes the reference track and comes up with its own EQ curve for the reference. Now, obviously there's a little bit of a volume difference, I'm not too worried. In the region inspector here, I had boosted my track by about 12.5 decibels, but this shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then I go to the EQ curve tab and click match. So what just happened? The match EQ has said, okay, Chris's mix sounds like this and his reference track sounds like this. So I'm going to try to EQ Chris's mix to sound like the reference track, at least to the best that it can. Okay, before we dig too far into this, we need to repeat the process for our other reference track. So let me go back to my empty audio track, open a new match EQ. Once again, select my mix and drag it onto the current tab. Select my other reference track, drag it onto the reference tab. And once again, match. Now for this process, it's so important to pick at least two, if not three reference tracks to compare against because what we're looking for are averages. We're looking for similarities between the curves to help guide us. If we worked with just one reference track, that wouldn't really be enough because I mean, 
honestly, at the end of the day, no matter what track we reference against another track, there will always be a difference in the curves, always. So we're not looking at the nitty gritty, we're just looking at what is comparable, what is similar between two or three different examples. And that may help us to understand how our mix is different and if there's any areas or room for improvement. Now you can see that this curve is slightly more robust than the first curve, and that sort of makes sense. While I was mixing this track, I was mostly referencing the first reference track. So it sort of makes sense that the curve for the first match EQ is not as robust. But looking at the two curves, they both kind of tell the same story if you think about it. I mean, take a look. At 50 hertz and below, there's a cut in both curves. At about 100 hertz, there's a boost. 200 to 500, there's another cut. 500 to 2K, there's a boost. 2K to 5K, a cut. And 5K and above, a boost. Okay, very interesting. They both reflect a similar story. Now, if both of these curves demonstrated a humongous booster cut, like 20 decibels, 30 decibels, then either number one, I picked the wrong style of track to reference. So maybe I picked a hip hop track, which might have more low end activity. But if I picked reference tracks that match my track and musical style, and I'm seeing a huge curve in either direction, then that means that I fell off the wagon somewhere, that I went down the wrong path, and I need to get back to my mix and fix whatever is going on. So if I saw a 20 or 30 decibel cut in the low end, that would say to me, okay, I went off the path, my bass or my kick drum is way too loud, and it needs to be reduced. Or if the high end needs a humongous cut or boost, something's going on up there, so on and so forth. So these two curves look pretty reasonable to me, so I'm not too worried that I went off the path. But now we can listen to our mix with fresh ears and a new perspective, and with these curves in mind, we can start to make some guesses. Let's take a listen once again. Quieter one. I'm trying to find a place where I can grow. The light of the moon reflects the white of the snow in the grand about the way. So, aside from the dynamics being much more tightened up and squashed in the reference tracks, so now I'm starting to get some ideas. Okay, yeah, my reference tracks sound brighter than my mix, which would kind of explain the 5K and above boost. Okay, good to keep in mind. I also feel that the bass in my reference tracks is far sturdier and more stable and prominent, which might explain the 100Hz boost. I also feel that even though my track isn't as bright, there's something a little too aggressive in the upper mids, okay? I also feel that my mix isn't as full as my reference tracks in the mid-range, which probably explains that 1K boost. You know, so we're just starting to make observations and guesses. We're approaching our mix from a new place. Now, is the match EQ the gospel? Is this telling us exactly what's wrong with our tracks and what needs to be improved? No, again, no matter what two tracks you compare against, there's always going to be differences, but we're looking for a similar story across two or three different curves to help guide us. And then at the end of the day, you get to make the final decision. Is a high-end boost necessary for your track? Do you need to go back to the mix? Do you want to make these adjustments for your mix? Totally fine. But at this point, I could either say, okay, I'm going to go back to my mix, I'm going to tighten some stuff up, or when I use a linear EQ to master my mix, I can keep this in mind as I start to work on mastering. You know, so the Match EQ is such a wonderful way for us to visualize what is going on in our mixes to help us get to a much more stable and balanced place. So I hope that was helpful for you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I post new videos, new emails, new blog posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.